right. Recently on the show, I brought up the topic of why you should say no to your next promotion. And so now this is the flip side of the coin. Because it turns out that that promotion that I said to you, uh, the worker, hey, maybe you should say no the next time if you're not ready for it. Well, it turns out that uh, if you're a leader and you have been dangling a promotion and using a promotion, as leaders have for ever, that uh, it may have the opposite effect. This is fascinating. Because new analysis from ADP, they're big in the workspace, says that workers who get promoted are more likely to quit their jobs. And I remember when I saw this, I thought, huh? But it makes perfect sense. So the conventional wisdom is that promotions are a classic retention tool that helps pe keeps people rather from jumping ship. Hey, I know you want to make more money. I know you want more responsibility. We'll give it to you here. And, and the idea is we want to promote from within, keep good people. And again, a good it, it's not a bad strategy. It's just there's a flip side to this. So ADP research, researchers looked at data from 1.2 million workers at companies with a minimum of 1,000 employees. So very, very robust sample here. They found that 29% of workers leave within the first month of a promotion. If those workers had not been promoted, only 18% would have left. So here's a key number, a key, divide, a key dividing line. Six months after the promotion, the risk narrows the risk of them leaving. And after the six-month mark, those that were unpromoted are more likely to leave. Just barely, but more likely. So this is really interesting. So a promotion in a new job title makes a worker more desirable to an outside company because, hey, you're just coming fresh off a promotion or now you've got a title and some income. It puts you in a different job bracket, if you want to call it that. And it also increases the worker's confidence. So they end up looking elsewhere. Now, we're going to get to the solution to this, but this is just kind of setting up the, the, the problem, if you will, of what's happening. Lower skill workers were nearly six times more likely to leave their job in the first month after a promotion than if they hadn't gotten the boost. We're not seeing this as much with higher skilled workers. So many times top performers are on the cusp of advancement and they were already a heightened flight risk, meaning they were looking because they hadn't been promoted for a while. And so what happens is the leader waits too long to promote. By this time, they've already looked and they found other things or they've kind of gotten enough courage to go, I know I don't want to be here and, and now I know that I can go. So in essence, the promotion becomes too little too late. Now, one big flight risk is the worker who gets promoted into management. And I've talked about this. Now the data is backing me up. I've been saying this on the program, that the quickest way to lose people sometimes is to, is to promote them to a position they don't want. Get somebody who's killing it in sales, and then you go, well, it's time for you to be a sales leader because we want to keep you. And this data says that taking the salesman and promoting the salesman into a leadership role when they don't want it is not a way of keeping them. It's a way of pushing them out the door. Because the skill set, so the talent, the enjoyment, the passion between a salesperson and a sales leader are very different. And that's what I've said a million times on the show. Because a good salesperson, I'm going to tell you this, they're driven by two things. They're driven by selling the solution. They're providing a solution that just kind of makes a person happy and they get, a, they get a nice charge out of that. But salespeople are also driven by performance. They love throwing up a number on the scoreboard. 
So you take that salesperson that's motivated by those two things and you move them into a management role. And in this example, we'll say that the management role is not direct selling anymore. So they lose that winner's high, if you will, because they didn't close a deal that served a client through the product or service that is the solution and they get that, ah, I helped somebody. I got them something they needed. They also lose out on the scoreboard moment. Touchdown. Three-pointer. Slam dunk. You pick your sports analogy. Hit a home run. They lose that. And there's a huge difference between experiencing that as an individual and experiencing that secondhand as a manager. Now, some people like both. Some people go, you know what? I love the high as an individual winner. I love serving people with a solution. But I also love leading a team and dealing with the people problems. Some people love both and they move right into it seamlessly. But some people don't. And so in this scenario, when that happens, if you move a salesperson into a sales leader role and it doesn't give them the same juice, guess what? You just promoted someone into leaving. That's the idea. And, and so leaders have got to understand that. Let me also say, those of you who may be facing a promotion, meaning it's coming your way, you got to ask yourself, does this promotion, will it give me the juice that I get right now that I crave? Can I adapt? If you can, great. If you can't, own it. Because, again, I said this before on the show I did recently that you, reasons why you should say no to your next promotion, it, that teaching comes right back into this article in this study. Not every promotion is worthwhile. But to employers, they've long held that out as the carrot to dangle as a great retention tool, and it still can be. But now it's about customizing the promotion. There are multiple ways to reward somebody without giving them a new title and a new job. Heck, give them the title, don't give them a new job. Give them a little more money, don't give them a new job. These are honest conversations that leaders and you employees need to be having. How can you reward me, and I really want to be rewarded, without me pulling up stakes into something that I really, really enjoy? And so the irony here is the age-old, most obvious retention strategy is the promotion. But the numbers here say that a promotion many times is pushing someone out the door. So it's a catch-22. So what do leaders do? What do you do? Okay, I talked to what you need to do. You need to be able to assess, all right, is this next gig that I'm being offered, if I compare it to where I am now, is it truly going to make me happy or is it going to make me stand a little taller, but then I'm going to get over the raise, over the title, and I'm going to go, oh, I can't stand the work. This happened in the Great Resignation it was then called the Great Regret, where millions of people took a job, got there, was like, this is not better, and they wanted to go back. They created another category of phrase for that called the boomerang employees. So leaders, that's what you do as the worker, but leaders, listen, you've got to start asking yourself, do I know what makes my team tick? High level, do I know I mean, really know what they're good at. That's talent. This is my basic methodology. Leaders, you can use this. Do I know the work that they enjoy? Do I know what motivates them? What motivates them, not what I do to try to motivate them. What motivates them? You've got to start there. Now, the knowledge of those three categories of those three questions. Do I know what they're good at? Do I know what they enjoy? Do I know what results motivate them? When you know that, then you go, okay, I've got to use that information 
And I've got to promote based on that. And if I'm not promoting them into doing more of the work they're really good at, if I'm not promoting them into more, doing more, meaning a percentage of their day, let's say they're 50%, if I'm not promoting them into 75% of work they really look forward to, they work, they enjoy, they get lost in it, it's a bad idea. If, if I am not promoting them into a role where they get to produce more of the results that naturally motivate them, this is not a good fit. So let me just tell you, here's the reason why I share this. Number one, I don't want you to get promoted into something that you don't love. Number two, if you're a leader, I don't want you to promote somebody into leaving you. And then number three, we've got to circumvent the standard, the status quo, which is just promote, promote, promote. And we got to change it because we're wrecking people that are otherwise happy. It's really interesting stuff. Promotion is not always the right thing to do. Good stuff there. All right. Don't forget, you matter. You have what it takes. Press on.